System Secure. At this point, let's look in more detail at the kind of activity you might observe that could be indicators of a terrorist plan. What kind of things do they do? The first step for a terrorist organization to become viable is to increase its size. They do this by holding rallies, posting recruitment flyers, guiding visitors to their websites, and so on. Be on the lookout for suspicious documents that you find on your site. But keep in mind that freedom of speech and expression is guaranteed by the Constitution. Fundraising is uh, obviously very important in the uh, terrorist realm. Uh, they need money, just like every other criminal uh, entity does. Uh, they use the internet quite a bit for fundraising, as well as uh, obtaining funds from governments uh, that are sympathetic to their cause. What we're seeing locally is the uh, trafficking of narcotics, pseudofedrin, as well as other drugs that are used for uh, profits obtained from these the sales are used to fund terrorist organizations in the Middle East, as well as other countries abroad. Another key step for terrorists is to get money. The easiest way to get money is to steal it. There is no record. ID theft, for example, is on the increase. And using another person's identification is an easy way to illegally obtain cash or merchandise that can be converted into cash. Property that is stolen can also be sold to generate cash. Terrorists frequently commit armed robberies to get quick cash. Naturally, all of these are serious crimes, for whatever reason they are committed. If your site handles financial transactions in any way, keep in mind the purposes to which the money can be put. Also, if your site experiences the theft of uniforms, vehicles with company logos, etc., such kinds of activities should arouse your suspicions and be reported. The types of weapons that a terrorist can use are introduced in detail in the next chapter. But at this point, let's list the three main kinds. Conventional weapons such as guns, explosives, and incendiary devices. Chemical and biological agents. Nuclear weapons and radiological material. Here is what you should be on the lookout for. You are looking at various blasting caps to set off an explosion. If you see anything like this at your site, let someone know immediately. This image shows how a small homemade pipe bomb, such as the one in the top left hand corner, can cause a major detonation. Pipe bombs come in different sizes, but all can easily be carried on a person. Here you can see the components of a homemade bomb in a backpack. All the components are legal and easily attainable. The devastation caused by mass destruction weapons such as explosives can be enormous, as several incidents both in the United States and other countries have shown. Chemical agents are highly toxic, but are used less often because their effect is hard to limit. The best way of preventing their use is to stop theft of chemicals from your site. The potential users have to get into your site to steal this material. And that's where your important position comes into play. Biological agents cause illness and death. Anthrax is probably the best known of these. But any kind of easily infectious disease causing agent can also spread terror. In addition, the terrorist needs a way to deliver the poisonous substance in the place they want to attack. One simple and effective way is to place the biological agent into the air conditioning or heating system. Nuclear weapons are extremely hard to come by. One possibility is for the terrorists to combine a traditional explosive device with radioactive material, the so-called dirty bomb. Your most important role is to prevent access to, transportation of, or removal of potentially dangerous materials. Once they have chosen a weapon type, the terrorist wants to choose a date of attack. Previously, we have mentioned dates important to our country, such as Independence Day. We should also be aware of other symbolic dates, such as those related to a given religion or dates that correspond to large groups of people being assembled in one area, 
such as Super Bowl Sunday. Being aware of dates important to different groups and being extra vigilant in the period leading up to such days is crucial. At this point, the terrorist needs to check out the site to assess weaknesses, human and physical, and to conduct dry runs. What should you pay attention to in order to stop them? The idea is to become aware of actions that just don't fit the location and situation. For example, is someone coming closer to a sensitive area than he or she has any valid reason to be? Does she stay in one place for a much longer time than the view deserves? Have you had several such small incidents lately? All those add up to suspicions. In addition, if you find forgotten cameras or equipment in places where there's nothing of tourist interest to photograph, maps, drawings, and cryptic notes would also be something you should report. Finally, anyone asking you questions related to security such as inquiring about the patrol times of a guard at a power plant, the number of people at the facility, the air conditioning systems, or locations of emergency exits should be documented and reported. Trying to move a weapon to the target is a terrorist's next challenge. Be on the lookout for nervous behavior or odd clothing for the environment, such as being heavily dressed in the 100 degree heat of summer. Should the weapon be brought in a vehicle, pay attention to large containers and vehicles that appear to be overloaded. Similarly, drivers or operators of any kind of vehicle, including private planes and boats, who do not have current valid operator's licenses should be noted and reported. Also be aware of parked or disabled vehicles in unusual places. Unless this is a suicide operation, the terrorist now needs to escape. The same indicators that made you suspicious of people arriving should cause you to think twice at the time they are trying to leave. They may have less to carry, but they may be more nervous and have a greater sense of urgency. However, if it is a suicide operation, the terrorist does not wish to escape. In the past, we thought we could describe fairly accurately the characteristics of a potential suicide bomber, but this is no longer the case. There is no real profile. Suicide bombs can be delivered by multiple means such as vehicle bombs, boat bombs, airplanes used as weapons as we saw on September 11, and a person with an explosive strapped to his or her body. Given that the terrorist does not want to escape, the pre-incident indicators are essentially the same as for non-suicide operations, with the possible extra stress of the knowledge of death leading to hesitancy nervousness, or extra bulky clothing to conceal a device. All in all, the primary skill for you to develop is a sense for what doesn't fit in. Take a look at the scenario that follows in which a police officer who makes a routine traffic stop decides that something doesn't seem right. These terrorist groups or extremist groups may, may attempt to obtain access to secure areas or secure environments to conduct their next operation. Uh, one of the ways they're going to do that is by wearing uniforms, wearing badges, or carrying credentials that allow them to infiltrate these secure areas and gain access to areas they normally wouldn't have access to so they could blend in with their environment. These are things that we need to look for when we're out in the field. Uniforms, badges, contraband, anything that would allow them to gain access into areas they normally wouldn't have access to. Uh, that next vehicle stop where a person or group is in possession of these items, items may be stolen, they may be lawfully obtained, but that may be the next stop to taking that piece out of the puzzle to the next terrorist act. So keep your eyes and ears open. Uh, report any suspicious activity to your TLO officer.
Good afternoon. Hi. I stopped you for failing to yield to a pedestrian. Oh, I, did, I didn't even see him. I'm sorry. Okay, do you have your driver's license and registration with you? Yes. Can I see those, please? Is this your correct address on your license, ma'am? Yes. Is this car registered to you? Yes, it is. What year is it? It's a uh, 72, I think. Okay. Who do all these uniforms belong to? I don't know. Where are you taking them to? I don't know. Wherever I'm told to. Wherever who tells you? My employer. Wherever your employer tells you to take them? Who do you work for? I work for uh, dry cleaners. You work for a dry cleaners? Yes. What's the name of the dry cleaners that you work for? Um, it's, a, it's a place around the corner, the, the one hour cleaners. One hour cleaners? Yes. Okay, just wait here, I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Yeah. The driver's got an outstanding warrant, but something's just not right. Uh -huh. She has a whole bunch of police uniforms in the car, and when I asked her about where she was going, she didn't know. She said she didn't know where she was going. I asked them who the uniforms belonged to. She said she didn't know. And when I asked her who she worked for, she was real hesitant, real nervous, and she told me she worked for a dry cleaners just around the corner. Yeah. But for right now, I just want to arrest her for the warrant and transport her to the station. Good deal. All yeah. right. You know, something's just not right about all those police uniforms that she's got in that car and where she says she's going and who she says the uniforms belong to and who she says she works for. It's just not right. Did you notice those extremist stickers also? Yeah, you know, I did notice those. I think between all those uniforms in the car and her story and those extremist stickers, I think I'm going to notify Detective Tomasi, our TLO, see if he can uh, respond out here, make him aware of the situation. Good deal. Right. Motor 8, uh, River City, can you contact Detective Tomasi and advise him to respond to my location, please? Unit Motor 8, 10 4. In this scenario, you saw the potential theft of police uniforms. Keep in mind, however, that other credentials are targets for theft, such as ID badges, key cards, and so on. Certainly not the only threat. The widely publicized beliefs of organizations like Al-Qaeda are symptomatic of a terrorist group. Their purpose is to disrupt civilian lives and damage structures in order to inflict the maximum possible emotional, physical, and economic damage. They are especially interested in targets that have symbolic value, such as the World Trade Center buildings. Typical targets are government buildings, mass transit facilities, public buildings, communication, and utility facilities. Also, water supply locations, food production sites, recreational facilities, and any location where large numbers of people gather, such as a stadium, malls, the beach, and so on. This is where you, America's security professionals, work. Your awareness and knowledge are crucial to California's security. The purpose of terrorism is to terrify, to frighten civilians by unprovoked attacks against a group or a nation. One of the most commonly used terrorist tactics is murdering large numbers of people. The white supremacist Buford O. Furrow was sentenced to life without parole for his shooting of five people, including three children at a Jewish community center and for shooting and killing a Filipino-American postal worker. Furrow had previously been chased away from the Simon Wiesenthal Center in Los Angeles by private security professionals. That's before he could have inflicted even more damage. In 1999, a terrorist by the name of Ahmed Rassam attempted to cross the border between the United States and Canada. Rassam was carrying explosive materials in his car that were later determined to be intended to blow up the Bradley Terminal at Los Angeles International Airport. 
Fortunately, U.S. customs agents became suspicious of Rassam's hesitant answers to their questions and took him into custody. Rassam was sentenced to 130 years in prison. Terrorist acts are not always against people. For example, some people believe they are in the right when they destroy property to make a point for a cause, such as in the case of the vandalizing of car dealerships or serious arson fires directed at new housing developments. Some extreme environmental and animal rights groups have adopted new and often violent tactics. It's been guerrilla warfare all summer out west. The extremist Earth Liberation Front, or ELF, has claimed responsibility for a rash of fires in California, including this $50 million development in San Diego. The entire history of their organization has never harmed one person. Former ELF spokesman Craig Rosebrow says property destruction is a necessary tactic. And the goal is economic sabotage, is to try to inflict maximum economic damage to entities that are destroying the natural environment. And it's not just environmental extremists. Equally stealthy animal rights radicals also are turning up the heat with an escalating rampage of destruction. In all, these extremists claim more than $100 million of damage across the country. Animal rights activists bombed this Bay Area biotech firm, released 10,000 mink in Washington. Environmental extremists are taking aim at new targets, SUVs and Hummers, torched near LA, peppered with BBs in Houston, tagged in Santa Fe. They're not proving a point. All we're doing is making people angry. Driving a Hummer, $50,000 General, Motor, General Motors tool for the rich, 10 miles to the gallon, that is violence. Going in and torching those and getting rid of those, that's an act of liberation, and it should be applauded.